Kosher is a 1996 Danish crime drama directed by Nicholas Windig Refn, who in the late years has made quite a name for himself internationally by making movies such as The Neon Demon, Valhalla Rising and Drive. This was his debut movie at an age of only 25 years old. Instead of finishing his studies at a highly rated Danish film school in Copenhagen, he dropped out after seeing Kevin Smith's low-budget film Clerks in order to make a short film, which would end up getting him the finances of around $1 million to convert the story into a full-time feature. Which of course will be the movie I'm talking about today, Pusher. Pusher tells the story of week in the life of a drug dealer named Frank, who is operating deep in the underworld of the capital of Denmark, Copenhagen. Together with his friend and partner in crime Tony, he sets up a drug deal involving 200 grams of hash with a street value of $20,000. The deal goes bad however, with the police interrupting, leaving Frank in huge debt to the Serbian crime lord Milo, who on top of that already owed another 8 grand. Milo gives Frank 24 hours to come up with the money, which is way more than what Frank has available. Frank has to race against time as he knows the consequences of failing to deliver the payment will most likely end up with dismemberment and or death. The 90s was a good decade for crime movies. We saw the rise of Quentin Tarantino, the Brits were delivering plenty of great ones, and of course Asia had an amazing share of their own. The genre took full use and was in the forefront for a new wave of underground, raw and gritty filmmaking. And that's exactly what Pusher is. It's a grimy glimpse into the underworld of what we in the Nordic countries might believe are safe and quiet cities, not like the dangerous streets of the US with gangsters on the corner selling dope, but for those who look a bit closer they will see that the same stuff is happening in our very own backyards, just of course on a smaller scale. This film has a great 90s aesthetic to it, being shot handheld on 60mm and as realistic as possible. Some scenes are shot very dark, where you can't even see the characters all that clearly, but it is calculated and not done by mistake or lack of budget or cinematic sensibility. The film has a high energetic pulse running constantly through the 100 minutes it takes for Refn to tell the story. The character of Frank is such an unlikely choice for a leading character in a movie. He basically has no redeeming qualities, nor does most of the other characters portrayed in Pusher, Refn does not care to bring sympathy to the characters, he just wanted to portray them as realistic, real human beings. Not super thugs or make us feel sorry for the fact that they ended up in this environment, nope, nothing of that at all. Frank took several wrong choices and now he has to deal with the consequences of them. Kim Bodnia, the actor who played Frank, does a tremendous job with the character. There had to be a lot of trust on this production as they didn't have the time to rehearse all of the scenes beforehand. There was plenty of room for improvisation, which just adds to the realistic feel of the film. Supporting characters also come off as realistic as the Frank character. Mats Mikkelsen, who in the late years risen to stardom in Hollywood, plays his friend Tony. A character that would be revisited nearly 10 years later in the second push movie, released in 2004. The other characters in the film, the Serbian gangster Milo and his main henchman Radovan, comes across so genuine that it makes you believe that these are real life gangsters that Refn just found on the streets. The ending might leave some viewers as big question marks, but if you pay attention then it does make sense and works great. In other words, without spoiling anything, the ending is not a closed book but rather very open for interpretations. It's no surprise that director Niklas Winding Refn has made a good career for himself after his film. While he was a fan of exploitation films at an early age, it is easy to see that he also has a sense of his own style and that he has the talents to bring it to the screen. When he talked about this film, he mentioned that it was influenced by Cannibal Holocaust, The Battle of Algiers and Mean Streets, actually going so far to saying that he basically just ripped off everything from those movies. While it is possible to see where he is coming from, I think he's not giving himself enough praise for his work on Pusher. Pusher would become a great stepping stone into making a career for himself for all the key people involved on the film. It also got two sequels, released in 2004 and 2005, and even two British remakes in the early 2010. One being shot in the language of Hindi. There was also talks of turning it into an American television series for Fox at one point, although talks of that seems to die down in the later years. 
Exposure is an excellent piece of crime cinema. Its realistic approach and grittiness work so well that I would call it one of the best of its genre. It should be safely in the DVD shelves of all the fans of Nordic movies, and I do hope that it translates well with English subtitles for those who cannot understand Danish. I'm gonna give Pusher a strong score of 4.5 out of 5. Now I'm very interested in hearing what others think of this film, especially people that cannot understand Danish and had to watch this with subtitles. Did it translate well for you and did you enjoy this film? Let me know in the comment section below and subscribe for more reviews coming to this channel in the near future. Thank you for watching.